This is KGW News at Sunrise. And we start this five o'clock hour of sunrise with team coverage of the winter storm that came through the Portland metro area yesterday afternoon through yesterday evening. And a lot of you I know waking up this morning were dealing with this situation again during the early evening commute last night into the nighttime hours. A lot of people actually still on the roads this morning. Some abandoned their cars. Some are still in their cars. Messes on I-5, 205, 84 and Highway 26. So we'll have complete coverage of those city freeways coming up in just a moment. OK, let's get a progress report. This is a live picture. This is I-5 at McAdam. You see that semi truck just crawling along the freeway. But look over there to the far left of your screen. There is a backup of traffic that has been there since yesterday evening. It is a mess out there. Do not go out if you don't have to. Our crews are on the have to category this morning. We have them out and about. Chris is also standing by with the latest on weather and traffic. And guys, let's go ahead and give you the live look here uh, from our ODOT camera. This is I-5 at Lombard, by the way. You see this in the upper left hand corner of your screen. You see all these trucks here. This is a live camera. Uh, we're going to hear from Rod Hill in a couple minutes who is stuck in this backup. These trucks have been here for hours on I-5 southbound at Lombard. It's just a mess on the roads. The bottom line is uh, for most of us here in the Portland Vancouver metro area, if you are not equipped with traction tires or chains, you're not going anywhere. And and even if you are in a lot of cases, you're running into freeway situations like this, which means you're still not going anywhere. So I hope that paints the picture of what we're looking at this morning and what is a, such a struggle for a lot of us just to get in here and give you the information you need. First off, a winter weather advisory remains in effect for the Portland Vancouver metro area until 8 a.m. The live look from our Rose City Sky camera. There you go. There's one truck sneaking its way up I-5. There's a truck that is parked on the off ramp to Morrison or 99E. Uh, on I-5 southbound and you can see the snowflakes coming to an end over downtown. It's 28 at PDX. The east breeze really picking up. We do have some light snow flurries continuing across the area this morning and you see that little spiraling band of snow there offshore. The system that brought us the heavy dump of snow is gradually weakening here and it will slip off to the south and east as we roll through the day today. But the damage is done. What has fallen is not going to melt. We are below freezing across the metro area right now. 28 in Vancouver, Portland, Tigard, Sherwood, 29. We slipped south. You have escaped the brunt of this system in the Mid Valley, but we're still looking at temps real close to freezing here in Salem and Kaiser at 33. The plan for today keeps temperatures generally in the upper 20s in Portland. Snow flurries diminishing, the breeze picking up, and eventually the sun comes out. And we also hope that eventually our good friend Rod Hill will make it in from his epic journey along I-5 this morning. Good morning, Rod. Hi, uh, good morning, Chris. Uh, coming up on uh, two hours with, I mean, there's been a couple of nudges for, but for the most part, this is all lanes on I-5 south coming into downtown Portland from Vancouver, just completely stopped. I'm somewhere between Delta Park and not up to uh, Rosa Park, so unfortunately not up to an exit yet where I can get off so i mean and, and i will tell you again it's been a couple of hours for me personally of sitting here with hardly no movement starting to see an increased number of people getting out of their cars to you know take a look or to stretch their legs seeing a few people walk over to the side i'm going to assume they uh drank some coffee this morning that they needed to get rid of um because you know you just don't plan your day where you're going to be sitting in the car for two hours when uh, you thought you were going to be in the car for maybe 15 minutes now yeah. Well, Rod, uh, we, we hope at some point that we will get to see your face this morning, along with uh, all the, no doubt, hundreds of others, maybe thousands of others that are stuck on the freeway on I-5 right now. But let, uh, you know, Rod's testament there to what the roads are like. They are in bad condition, even on the freeways. And we hope to hear from uh, ODOT just a little bit uh, a time from now to figure out, you know, how, you know, they're going to get those folks off the road, how we're going to get the roads cleaned up. And uh, but you know what, guys, the big question is, when do we thaw out? And I can tell you it's not happening Today, your full forecast will come up in just a few minutes. Yeah, Chris, we were in the newsroom together yesterday afternoon as things developed quickly. But once things did develop, schools acted quickly. Last night, most of the uh, schools in the Portland, Vancouver area decided to close for the day today. So this list is just a few of the bigger ones. Portland, Beaverton, Hillsborough, 
Vancouver, Tiger Tualatin, all closed today. But again, this list is much longer. We have it scrolling at the bottom of your screen this morning, and you can also check out that school closure list at KGW.com. So how about a snow day with no power at home? A lot of folks are going to be in that position today. Let's run down some of the outages that we've heard about at this point. At last check, PGE reports 6,600 customers without electricity. Pacific Power is reporting 244 customers in the dark. And then Clark Public Utilities says it has six outages currently. So they are definitely in a better situation. All right, we do have team covers this morning of the winter storm, but we also have Dylan Rivera with the Portland Bureau of Transportation on the line with us this morning. So uh, Dylan, thanks for chiming in on the Zoom there. I don't even know where to you start bet, yeah. because there are so many situations I guess we could cover as far as the roads go in and around the Portland area. What is the area of biggest priority for your team this morning? We are really trying to focus on the busiest streets, the emergency routes that uh, TriMet and police and firefighters and uh, and uh, first responders like ambulances that they need. And uh, the challenge is uh, we've, we've just challenges everywhere. We've got abandoned vehicles downtown and in southwest blocking us. We're starting to get some down trees blocking our plows. Um, it's uh, it's still a mess out there and it is just not a good day for folks to be on the roads. So Dylan, you obviously have an all call with your crews, even with and tell us how many crews are out there. Even with that, this is going to be an all day process and then some. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Just to get all of our crews in to get all 55 plows on the streets. Um, we've had uh, we've had some of the same challenges that folks who were stuck in traffic last night had, you know, uh, one colleague, it took him four hours to get into Portland from Beaverton, you know, going different routes and, and, and going encountering road closures along the way and having to divert and go somewhere else. And, um, you know, it, it, vehicles uh, blocking traffic uh, just uh, right and left. So just getting to the yard here to get in a snowplow has been a challenge for folks. So um, it is just uh, it is really just challenging conditions out there. It's going to take us a while to get out of this. Can I ask you one more question, Dylan, while we have you? Uh, we're also showing a map at times during this interview, and the map has some uh, some blue on it. It has some purple on it. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with the map I'm talking about. There it is again right next to you on the screen. So can you just let our viewers know what the blue represents and what the purple represents this morning? Oh, yeah. So the blues are our snow and ice routes. Those are the routes where you'll see uh, snow plows. Um, the uh, let's see the uh, the thicker uh, uh, pink lines. Those are the salt routes. Those are about 120 miles of salt routes. I believe we've hit all those. Uh, we've treated those, and those are the the routes that are going to be thawing the the fastest. Um, and then uh, then the, uh, the the thicker uh, light blue. Uh, that's where we uh, we use the mag chloride. Those are the anti icing routes. The liquid de icer and um, that uh, has not been as effective with this event because we, we started with some rain before the snow. Mm -hmm. And so that's not great for, for de-icer, but uh, those are the routes and uh, you'll be seeing a shift change. And so you'll see those vehicles coming in closer to the yard here uh, in North Portland and then and then fanning back out over the next couple hours. So you can see our, our crews working uh, for you in real time. Please give them lots of room out there. Yeah, that's a good reminder, Dylan. Uh, we have been chatting about weather for many, many years, you and I. Um, I've been doing this about 30 plus years. And unfortunately, this storm was the worst case scenario for everybody. I don't really remember so many different freeways and side streets and people getting stuck at this magnitude. So maybe it's quantity as well as the a number of inches that we got. But Dylan, maybe you can speak to this. Anytime people leave their house expecting that the snow is going to be in the upper elevations and then they get stuck. This is the kind of avalanche, you know, no pun intended, that results in that because they are not prepared and then everybody is in a pickle. Oh yeah, it's 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 a you know domino effect of 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 one thing you know one you know a couple of of, of drivers encounter 
um, slick conditions, you know, earlier than they were expecting. Um, maybe they weren't expecting. They weren't maybe prepared. Uh, they didn't have chains or or or, or, or a front wheel drive or other uh, things that could help them uh, up a up a snowy hill. And then they get stuck. Then everyone gets stuck behind them. Then maybe there's a fender bender, and and then maybe there's a, a large truck or, or other uh, vehicle that that adds to the congestion, and then it just kind of cascades from there. I remember um, about 15 years ago there was one uh, a storm where downtown you could walk through, and and the 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 southbound streets were all backed up into downtown. The the northbound streets were were free flowing traffic. The southbound streets were all blocked up because. You know, there were large vehicles you know, jackknifed on Barber that <laughs> up in the hills that had blocked traffic all the way into downtown. And um, so it it's it can be a rippling effect of, of different factors and and snow ahead of the evening commute is just one of the worst. I mean, it really is one of the worst scenarios. And then a surprise on top of that, when you know it's coming, it's bad enough, and, and that, that would be challenging. You know, if someone said, "Okay, ten inches Wednesday afternoon and evening," that historic level magnitude of event would be that would be a whopper. But then to have it be a surprise <laughs> earlier than anyone expected uh, just uh, made it real, a real doozy. Yep, weather sometimes presents a challenge. <laughs> we certainly saw that yesterday, Dylan. Uh, we do appreciate you getting up this early, joining us on Sunrise. We may uh, check back in with you here in the six o'clock hour, but we'll let Dylan go for now. Uh, we talked about all those roads in and around Portland this morning with Dylan, and now we have uh, one of our crews on the roads this morning. Brian Clerkley is out in Drive 8. So Brian, can you just update? Oh, I see now that you've parked, you're out of the car. <laughs> I, for a second there, I didn't even think you were wearing a coat. Brian, where are you? <laughs> and what are the conditions like where you're at? Hey Drew, I am at 84 in the I-5 split right now and I'm just going to show you guys a little bit of what 84 going westbound into the city looks like. This is near the Lloyd District and you can see those trucks backed up right now. So we're not quite sure what's going on because the other lane, the eastbound lane, uh, doesn't look like it has much traffic. But as we've been driving around the city this morning, the roads have been covered in sheets of ice. People are going very slow. There's not many people out on the side streets throughout the city. So that's a good thing. We did see four TriMet buses that were stuck on 12th and East Burnside. Um, so yeah, the roads are not in great condition, but as you can see, it's a standstill here at 84 and the I-5 uh, uh, change right there. So you can just see um, those trucks that have that are stuck there, and it seems like they've been stuck there for a very long time. And again, we're not sure exactly what's going on there, but it looks like it's going to be a long time before those trucks start moving. So if you have to go out, I don't suggest it. Just be very careful. Drivers are going very, very slow. It does seem like there's some gravel on the roads, which is good. It makes it easier for us to get around. But but yeah, the, the conditions are not great right now and it's just plain cold as well. So hopefully these trucks can get moving as quickly as possible so we can, you know, so people can get to their destinations. But yeah, it just looks like a standstill. But what's amazing is the other lane, the eastbound lane, doesn't seem like there's much traffic on there. So, Drew? All right, Brian, thanks for that update. We have uh, Chris joining us now, Brenda. So you've got another vantage point because as we heard from Dylan and, and as we can see, I mean, it's not just that freeway, yeah, it's and, everywhere. And so here's the thing, we say, well, take your time. Uh, no, 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 no. Like, here's the thing. Like, even if you are equipped, you might run into that situation Absolutely. where the road's just blocked and yes. you're not going to get anywhere. And then you're, you're, you're A, increasing the problem mm -hmm. and making more problems for yourself, right? So really, it's just, I mean, not, not to get preachy, but I mean, we were lucky right. to get in this morning. I did not go the freeway. I took, yeah. and this again is at like 2.30 in the morning, I took the Sunrise Expressway mm -hmm. in from yeah. Clackamas, and then I hopped on McLaughlin. Where you I had avoided some routes, right? Absolutely, yeah. yes. And, and yet those are probably the areas that were treated the least and are probably in even rougher shape. Mm -hmm. So it, I do have really, snow tires. That helps. That yeah. helps. Of those but, snow tires, too. But that is not as I, <laughs> as I did. All right, well, let's give you another look. We have literally no idea 
how long any of these cars and trucks have been stuck here on the freeway at I-5 in Lombard. We know uh, meteorologist Rod Hill is in this traffic jam trying to get in from Vancouver this morning and he's stuck and he hasn't moved for two plus hours this morning. So he is in this that isn't moving right now. That is what the I-5 situation looks like. All right, watches and advisors here. We are still under a winter weather advisory until 8 a.m. For the most part, the damage done, we're not really adding any more snow, but we don't need to. The roads are a mess and the temperatures are below freezing. And here's the thing, they are not going to climb above freezing today. Radar does indicate some light snow flurries continuing to fall in parts of the area. Some slightly heavier snow, Washington, Yamhill County snowing. It's snowing at the beach, by the way. I showed you that camera from Lincoln City. Uh, there is snow on the beach in Oregon right now. So in some cases, we're even seeing snow all the way down to sea level at the coast. 26 right now, Forest Grove. It's 27 in downtown. It's 28 in Oregon City. And as I mentioned, those temperatures are not going anywhere today. Now down to the south, you folks in the central Willamette Valley have been largely spared the full brunt of this storm. And you can see that roads here have an opportunity to be in slightly better shape, but not great by any means. It's 33 right now in Salem, Kaiser and Dallas. The plan for today with Futurecast, Salem kind of teeters in the low 30s, but Portland, you can see our temperature doesn't budge. The east wind machine is cranking. It will continue to ratchet up. It will continue feeding cold air through the gorge. And so the bottom line is what's on the roads right now is not going to melt today and we get colder. Tomorrow morning we're waking up to temperatures in the teens. So it's going to take a while before we see those roads improve. I do have us seeing sunshine and temperatures in the mid 30s. Guys, I might have to actually shave this number down this 38 down just a little bit because with all the snow cover, sometimes that reflects the sun and, and, and doesn't really allow us to warm as much. But I do think we get above freezing tomorrow. I do think we get above freezing on Saturday, but then we refreeze the next couple of evenings. Real quick, I want to point out the seven day forecast. Snow to rain, snow to rain, snow to rain, snow to rain. I know that's going to get everybody like, uh oh, we got snow to rain. But here's the deal. Temperatures largely in the second half of our seven day forecast, even with snowflakes mixed in, are above freezing. We'll keep our eyes on that and we hope you stay tuned.